Hi guys, story recaps here, today, I am going to explain, a 2013, Spanish science fiction thriller movie, called, The Last Days. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. A mysterious illness spreads across the globe in the year 2013, causing individuals to develop an unreasonable fear of going outside. If they do, they will perish in a matter of seconds. Every city and town in the globe will soon become a wasteland with no one outside. Mark Delgado has been living in his job for three months, subsist on cafeteria food and assisting his co-workers in digging a tunnel under the parking lot to the subway. One day, he observes someone breaking a car window to take a GPS, which enrages him and prompts him to dig more aggressively. This turns out to be a good thing, for it is owing to him that they are ultimately able to burst through the wall and enter the building safely. Now that everyone is getting ready to go, Mark can't help but notice that one of his supervisors, Enrique, has the GPS in his backpack while standing in line for some necessities. Mark decides to track him down and confront him about it, and Enrique agrees to speak with him in private as long as Mark doesn't tell anybody else. Mark begins to recall how he met Enrique. The individual was hired many months ago to address the company's productivity issues and was known for being harsh in his treatment of staff, terminating them without hesitation if required. When he summoned Mark to his office, he chastised him for taking so long on the project, unwilling to acknowledge how difficult programming is, and issued an ultimatum, he had to finish by the end of the month or risk losing his job. Mark stayed late at the office, working on his code and becoming increasingly agitated with each failure. Julia, his girlfriend, called to tell him that she and her friend Andrea were closing up shop, and Mark promised to be there for supper. His computer, however, was blue-screened, and he ended up staying longer than anticipated. When he arrived at his flat, he discovered that his neighbor had opened his door just to see him, and that his girlfriend had already eaten supper without him. He finds her crafting toys for her shop, and while looking at a puppet, she might preserve for the future, she brings up the idea of having a baby, to which Mark responds that now is not the time. He couldn't sleep later that night, so he turned on the television. The news reported about a Canadian adult who committed suicide after staying six months inside his home, never moving due to fear. The next day at work, everyone was watching the same video, prompting Mark's co-worker Rivera to leave the area uneasily. He hadn't changed his clothing or taken a shower in days. Back in the present, Mark tells Enrique that he needs to find his sweetheart, and that the only way to do so is to use the GPS, because phones no longer have a signal. He makes a bargain with Enrique, if he takes Mark to his fiance, he'll give him all of the materials he took from Rivera's locker. Enrique initially refuses, but when Mark threatens to inform everyone about the stolen GPS, he immediately changes his mind. The two men enter the underground tunnels after bidding their goodbyes to their fellow. The GPS is functional, but they turn it off to conserve battery life, and for the time being, they rely on a subway map. There are already a large number of people down there, and they can hear gunfire, so they hurry till they reach the station, which is packed to the brim with survivors. Suddenly, Enrique's GPS equipped luggage is stolen by a teenager. He and Mark begin chasing him through the station, following him upstairs and avoiding a fire until they reach an area behind the turnstile. The child joins three men, one of which being his brother, a former cop with a gun. Its force causes them to tumble to their knees, as his brother searches the rucksack for the GPs, then moves forward to take Mark's bag as well. When the lights in the station go out, Enrique lunges on the cop and wrestles with him for the gun, while Mark attacks the child and retrieves the GPS after it falls to the floor and cracks its screen. Mark flees behind a column with the bag in his arms, while Enrique manages to retrieve the gun from the cop and murders him before wounding his teammate with a shot. Then he joins Mark and the two of them hurry away, effortlessly blending in with the crowd thanks to the darkness that has descended upon the area. They pause by the stairwell to bandage Enrique's hand cut and to see if the GPS is still working after it dropped, which it is, luckily. When Mark notices Enrique keeping the gun, he fears he'll be left behind, but Enrique insists on keeping his end of the bargain. Mark reminisces about the days leading up to the lockdown. He heard a lot of flies inside his neighbor's unit one morning as he was leaving his apartment to go to work, and he noticed the door was open, so he stepped inside to investigate what was going on. He discovered a whole apartment full of trash bags and a foul odor that made him cough. His next door neighbor discovered him and assaulted him with a knife, perplexed as to why he came inside when he had never shown any interest in him and didn't even know his name. When Mark inquired about how long he had been there, 
the man stated that he hadn't left the residence in months. He tried, but he was too terrified to succeed. Following that, Mark returned to work, where he witnessed Rivera being taken away by security guards after being dismissed for sleeping in the workplace and never leaving. Mark followed them out, despite Rivera's best efforts to fight back, the guards hauled him outdoors, and he began convulsing instantly. Mark told the guards to assist him take Rivera back inside because he had an idea about what was going on, but it was too late, Rivera had already died. Following that, Mark went through Rivera's locker and discovered a number of survival items, including a flashlight, a gas canister, and tin food. Later that evening, he told Julia about what had transpired and how he believed there was something serious going on. Julia consoled him, and they kissed. Back in the present, Mark wakes up from a nap and finds Enrique nowhere to be found, leading him to believe he's abandoned him. However, Enrique soon appears with a plastic bag containing the GPS, which he'd grabbed to protect it from water damage. Mark tries to figure out what or who is waiting for Enrique at his destination in the underground tunnels, but Enrique refuses to answer. He also observes Enrique's habit of saving the seeds of everything he eats, such as apples. They found an opening to the sewers with the help of the GPS and jumped inside, not being wounded because the water cushioned their fall. They resorted to using the GPS to navigate their way around and ultimately arrived at the area beneath Mark's apartment building. To get inside, they devise a simple plan, they suspend the gas canister from the ceiling pipes, and blast it with a gun, causing it to explode. Enrique misses his shot, so Mark takes over and attempts. He misses his first attempt as well, causing his ear to bleed from the noise. However, when he tries again, he hits the target, and the subsequent explosion tosses him to the ground. Enrique assists him in rising, and the two climb the debris and through the hole to gain entry to the building, which, like the station, is crammed with migrants. Mark's old neighbor still lives in the same flat, but the latch on his door is broken. Through the spy hole, they can see an eye staring at them, which enrages Mark, who begins yelling and pounding on the door, which is being held open by a man speaking in a foreign tongue. Mark takes advantage of the man's exposed hand and bites it, prompting him to back up and allowing him to enter his home. The man threatens them with a knife, resulting in a standoff until the man's wife and daughter arrive. They didn't have some place to go, so they took the apartment because it was unoccupied, says the small girl. Mark tells them the place is theirs once they lay their weapons down, and takes a photograph of Julia off the wall to inquire whether they've seen her, but they say there was no one there when they came. Following that, they took a look around the area. Enrique discovers no food in the refrigerator, but there are dead doves being ready to eat, as well as an old popcorn bag in the trash can from which he recovers the seeds, as well as a kitchen knife. Meanwhile, Mark goes to Julia's work table and, after finding her puppet, grabs a drawing the little girl made and turns the sheet of paper around when he notices the name of a doctor on the corner. It's a picture of an ultrasound, because Julia has been pregnant since the last time he saw her and he was unaware of it. Mark begins to recall their last encounter. They were watching the news and learning about the global pandemic known as the panic, which was causing an increasing number of deaths. When the news shifted to show pregnant ladies giving birth in deplorable conditions, his mood deteriorated, and he began to rant about how irresponsible it all was, Julia suddenly realized that he had never actually desired children, and that all of his justifications throughout the years were just that. She went and locked herself in the bathroom, upset and crying, disregarding Mark when he tried to talk to her through the door. He went to work that day, immediately observing how quiet the streets were and how trash was stacking up in the cans, a man in the metro was even wearing a mask. When he arrived at the office, he dialed Julia's number, but Andrea answered, informing him Julia didn't want to talk to him right now. Mark decided to return because he was desperate, especially after both the phone and the surrounding televisions lost their signal. However, as soon as he walked outdoors, he became ill, forcing him to rush back inside and remain there indefinitely. In the present, it has begun to rain, so Mark and Enrique use an old stretcher to assist the family in collecting water. People all throughout the city will soon using sticks to fill buckets and pots with rainwater to replenish their water supply. Enrique carves two spears from broomsticks in the evening, while Mark fills several bottles with the newly acquired water, as well as putting Julia's puppet in his bag. They return to the sewers in the morning and fight about which path to take when they reach a fork. Mark wants to travel to the mall where Julia used to work to see if she's still there, but Enrique refuses, claiming that his arrangement just required him to drive him to his apartment and that it wasn't his fault she wasn't there when they arrived. 
He even pulls out his knife to defend himself and wonders aloud if Julia is still alive, which enrages Mark, who jumps on him and starts beating him up. Enrique drops the knife in the struggle, and Mark drops the flashlight, which breaks as it hits the ground. The two men break up the quarrel, and Mark demands to know what Enrique has that is more important than his wife and baby, so Enrique finally admits he wants to visit his father at the hospital where he has been since he lost his ability to move due to an embolism. He also assures Mark that he is welcome to accompany him because the GPS will be as once he arrives at the hospital. Mark accepts with some hesitation. The two come over some stairs that lead them into a church. They locate a lighter and a hip flask with alcohol still inside while rummaging around, so they utilize both of these items, along with some wood, to make a fire. Someone's attention appears to have been drawn to the light since they hear some noises close, prompting them to take their spears and investigate. What they see at the back of the church is extremely unexpected, it's a bear, who immediately begins chasing them. Mark is on his way to the sewer steps when he notices Enrique has fallen and the bear is on him, so he stays to assist. He pokes the bear with his spear to frighten it away from Enrique, who dashes back to their campfire and lights a lamp to keep the beast at bay. This isn't enough, though, because the bear is advancing and pushing them towards the exit doors, so Mark devises a plan, he asks Enrique to drop the torch, and when he does, the bear takes advantage of the opportunity to jump on him, so Mark greets him with his spear pointed at him, impaling the bear on it. When they discover a tag that states the bear is from the Barcelona Zoo, both men burst out laughing. They're eating the bear meat they've roasted over the fire a few moments later. Enrique thanks Mark for staying instead of fleeing with the GPS and acknowledges that he would have dismissed him before everything happened. However, this admission simply makes them laugh even harder. Enrique also acknowledges that he is concerned that if his father dies, no one will notice, and that he still has some important issues to discuss with him. Mark responds by saying he told Julia he didn't want children, but this isn't totally true, he was only afraid he wouldn't be able to care for and protect the child, a dread that has only grown more acute in the current scenario. They return to the sewers a few hours later and come across a family approaching from the opposite direction. They tell them to accompany them to the hospital since one of them is hurt, but they respond with bad news, rumors say Enrique's father's hospital has burned down. Enrique goes through the next door and enters a building, climbing the steps until he reaches a floor high enough to look out over the city and confirm the rumors, the hospital has really burned down. Enrique breaks the window with a chair, and prepares to jump since he feels he has nothing else to live for, but Mark brings him back inside and tells him he needs him. Enrique doesn't agree, so he gives Mark the seeds for his upcoming child and tells him to leave. Mark finally reaches the mall, which he enters through a parking lot full with bodies. Ignoring the feeling of being followed, he goes to Julia's business, only to discover Andrea's mother's body. He searches through all of the papers and journals, but finds no clues, so he throws everything on the ground and screams until he notices something in the mirror. He finds a message from Andrea for her mother, claiming they're stuck in the supermarket part of the mall. Mark rushes to that section, which has been closed to prevent those leaving upstairs from stealing their food. The men protecting them threaten Mark with a bow, so he pulls out a photo from his apartment and explains that he isn't looking for trouble. All he wants is to find his love. While waiting for one of the men to walk to the back to verify if Julia is with them, Mark notices some shadows moving behind him. Suddenly, a group of people who had been following him emerges, seizing the opportunity provided by Mark's preoccupation to break into the market and battle over the food. As both groups engage in a violent brawl, Mark enters the market in search of Julia, but instead discovers Andrea. She explains that the last time she saw Julia was before she went to the doctor, and she directs Mark to a nearby escape after knocking off an incoming attacker. When a beam of fire falls from the ceiling between them trapping Andrea between the flames and the outer world, they are separated. She unlocks the doors, and Mark begs her to get outside, but she can't, and she dies as more of the ceiling falls on top of her. Mark makes a hasty retreat in the opposite direction, only to be tackled by one of the crazed raiders. Enrique appears just as he's going to be stabbed and knocks the assailant away before assisting Mark in standing up. The assailant hasn't gone away, and he immediately approaches Enrique to stab him in the stomach. Enrique pushes him away once more and is about to impale him with his spear when he realizes it's just a youngster and decides to spare him. Enrique tells Mark they need to get out of the mall before the whole structure collapses, pretending his wound isn't a huge concern and that he's alright. They return through the sewers until they come upon a hole in the ceiling that was dug by someone else, and they climb inside to find themselves in a movie theater. 
Because there is no one else around, Mark approaches the glass door and notices Julia's doctor's office across the street. However, because the tunnel is blocked, he won't be able to get there this way. Desperate, he climbs the steps and peers through the window, hoping to spot Julia inside the other building. It takes him a few moments to notice her, and when he does, he begins calling her name and slamming his window in the hopes that she will notice him as well. At first, it appears that Julia would never turn around, but Mark's strategy appears to be working, because Julia suddenly turns and the couple finally sees each other again, crying with joy. Mark runs downstairs to inform Enrique about Julia, only to see him bleeding out at the theater. Enrique refuses to let him look for something to heal the wound, declaring that his time has arrived. His final words are a suggestion, that Mark quit complaining and cross the street once and for all to be reunited with his family. Enrique then passes away, and Mark takes a minute to grieve before acting on his advice. Both he and Julia make it to their separate doors, and Mark finally steps outside after some difficulty. He feels nauseous and disoriented right away, his ears start bleeding, and he has problems walking. However, by keeping his gaze fixed on Julia, he is able to continue even after collapsing, crawling the rest of the way until a blinding white light becomes the only thing he can see. Mark recognizes he's successfully crossed the street and made it to the building as Julia's face appears above him, and as the light disperses, he realizes he's finally reunited with his lover. The couple decides to stay in the building and begin a new life there, gathering rainwater and planting Enrique's seeds. Their son is born strong and healthy, and when he learns to walk, he ventures outside on his own, demonstrating that the panic has not damaged the new generation. When a group of roaming youths comes up at their door several years later, Mark and Julia decide to let their son join them so that he can learn about the outside world, and possibly reconstruct civilization from the ground up. Subscribe, and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.